What is going on everybody and welcome to part three of the go tutorial basics. Uh, in this tutorial what we're going to be talking about is typing information. Uh, like I said in the first tutorial, we really are going to get to actually applying this to something more useful. The thing we're going to apply it to though is uh, Go has a built-in web server, does web obviously uh, like web applications pretty simply right out of the box, even with just the standard library. So that's what we're going to do, but even just to do the most basic Hello World example, we still have to get through a lot of like really basic, truly just basic things about Go, uh, especially because I think a lot of people are coming from Python, since that's mainly what I do on my channel. Um, and things like today, what we're going to be talking about is typing information, uh, which uh, is something you just don't even have to think about in Python. And there's some little intricacies here that will trip you up. Uh, so anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to, for this one, we just really need format and we can empty out main. And let's talk about types. So in Go, there's quite a few types. I'll put a link in the description to the text-based version of this tutorial. If I forget, someone just remind me. Um, and there it has all the types there, but you'll use those and then you can actually create your own types later on. Um, basically the types that you're gonna be using here are gonna be like bool, int, float32 or float64, uh, byte, I'm probably forgetting some of the other ones that you're probably going to use. Um, string, if I didn't say string. Uh, anyway, but you can check out all the types that you have available. But we're going to use mostly just numbers for now, just to get an idea. We'll probably throw a string in there too. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and create a simple function. We're going to call this func add. And add is going to add together two variables like x and y. And then it's going to return um, a you know, whatever the addition of these two things are. So um, so in Python, you wouldn't have to add any typing, but in Go, you have to add what are the types of these, these variables. So x, the type of x, we're just gonna say is float64, and then for y, we're gonna say the same thing, float64. Also, you need to specify the type if the function is going to return something, you have to specify of what type will the return be. Again, we're gonna say float64. Now. It, since Go is all about efficiency, it's likely the case that you don't need the precision of 64 bits. You could probably use a float 32, but I'm a man with a plan and um, it, I'm using float 64 for a reason. So we'll continue with float 64 and you'll see why soon. So return, um, and then we just return whatever X plus, plus Y is. So then we can come down here and we could add some things together um, but I also want to show you variables. So we're going to, we're going to define some variables and then pass those variables to the function. Cause we could just say add and then, you know, five, I don't know, 5.5 .5 and something else, but, um, we're going to use variables first. So to define a variable, um, there's a few ways we could get away with this or, and do this, but we'll just show a really basic one first. So for, let's say we're going to call this num one. So we would say var num one. So var the name of it and then the type that we're gonna make this, so this will be a float 64, um, because this is expecting a float 64. And then uh, we'll say that equals 5.6. And then we're gonna say var num2, again, float 64, and that's gonna be equal to 9.5. Now we could do format.print, don't forget the capital P, print line, um, and then add num1, num2. So we'll save that and then we'll just pull up the interpreter, go run go tut.go and we get 15.1. Now, uh, chances are you're not gonna see people's programs that look like this. They're gonna use a lot more of like kind of shorthand. So there's a lot of things that we can do to make this quicker and, and, and less text on screen. So first of all, anytime you've got a succession of things, um, just in general in programming, if you've got like repetition you, there's probably a way to get rid of the repetition. So, so anytime you've got a bunch of like a bunch of variables that are of the same type or parameters of the same exact type, you can actually just condense it. So we can get rid of this float 64 here and just say x comma y float 64 function returns a float 64 return x plus y. Um, let's just save and run that real quick just to show. Cool as expected. Now, uh, the next thing is like the, we've got multiple variables here. Now, the same thing you could do in Python, you can do here. So you could say var num1 comma num2, both of type float64 equals 
comma 9.5. So two things, it'll get unpacked into those, uh, like num1, num2. So 5.6 gets unpacked to num1, num2 is 9.5 and so on. So we could save that, run that, again, 15.1. That said, people don't tend to, to do this in Go. So anything outside of a function, you would have to define using the var and give the type and all that. If it's inside a function, you can use some shorthand and you actually don't have to give the type. Go will figure it out when you compile. But the type cannot change after it's been compiled. So it'll kind of figure it out and then once it compiles, uh, you could never change that type again. So you still have to, it's only gonna have one type. It's not gonna be dynamic every time the program comes to it. It's just one time. So uh, what you could do is you could say, rather than var, you could just say num1, comma num2, get rid of float64, colon equals 5.6, 9.5. Now we can add those two things together. So save, come up here, run, and we get 15.1. Now, like I said before, I'm a man with a plan. What if we wanted this to be super efficient because 5.6, 9.5, we don't need the precision of 64 bits Let's go to uh, 32. Less garbage. So we'll go ahead and save that. And let's run that. Oh, we get an error. Uh, and the error is that we can't use num1, which happens to be a type float 64, as a type float 32 in argument blah, 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 blah. So when, when this was, was given a type, Go saw, okay, it's a float. We'll just give it float 64. And then it hits to the function here, and it's like, oh, we can't use that, <laughs> right? So, so yes, you can use the shorthand, but if you wanted things to be explicit in some way and you want to use, like, float32, for example, and not just some default type that it's going to get, uh, you would need to specify typing information. Also, just in case I don't cover it, um, there are also constants, so C-O-N-S-T. Obviously, to notify that it's a constant, you have to use the term constant. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to define it like the you know the first var variables I showed you. So yeah, like constant, I don't know, x int equals five. Okay. So, um, okay, those that's a, a few things there. Now with shorthand, like let's say you had a func that's going to return multiple things. So we're going to say multiple, uh, and then multiple is going to take in we'll say uh, two strings. So let's say it takes an A, B string, and then it returns, we're just gonna have it return A, B. <laughs> so uh, it returns string, right? But since we want this function to be able to do return A comma B, i.e. it's returning two things, so two strings, we actually, unfortunately, have to put this again in parentheses, watch out there, uh, and, and specify every return type even if they are the same return type, you still have to specify both of them. So A, B, string, string. So now what we're gonna do, and I'm, I'm gonna purposely leave num1 and num2 there for now, just to show you another interesting thing about Go. Um, so now let's say, uh, um, we'll say word one comma word two equals, I don't know, hey, I already messed up, but oh, I messed up twice. So double quotes, first of all, and then also not a single equals, colon equals. We'll say, hey, comma, uh, there. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and uh, format dot print. Don't forget your capital P, print line. Um, and then whatever the return of multiple is when we pass W1 and W2. So it should just say, hey, there. But we're going to hit an error. Um, we'll go ahead and run it anyway, and there you go. You see num1 is declared not used and num2. This is uh, Interesting it kind of makes Development sometimes hard as, you, as you're trying to build a program and, and output things as you go So if you really wanted num1 and num2 you like you're, you're planning to use it But you just wanted to make sure you got to a certain point you could just comment them out. So a comment is just a single line comment is just gonna be two slashes. A double line comment is gonna be, you know, forward slash star or asterisk, asterisk forward slash. And that, that would work over multiple lines, okay? Um, so you could just comment them out if you wanted to use them, but we're pretty much done with them now. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete them. 
Now the function that you wrote is it's not a big deal, but also if you made an import that you don't use, that's going to throw an error. So we'll save that, and we should see hey there this time. And we do. That's good. So um, there's that. So now a couple more things I want to show before I wrap this one up is like you can do um, like if you wanted to convert a type, like you could say var a int equals 62 and like you want to say like var b uh, float 64 equals um, and then you can just convert it. So you could say float 64 a and that will convert a to a float 64. Also, um, you can they type inference works. So you could say like, um, we've got var a int 62. You could then say um, x, col oops, x colon equals a. And x will be type int. Okay. Um, so you can kind of just keep that in the back of your mind. So uh, I think that's all I want to show on typing information and just one more basic thing that you've got to get used to, especially if you're coming from Python, you never had to think about that. Uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.